Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome back to another forecast discussion. I uh, haven't been doing these uh, in the recent uh, days, been busy on the road, but wanted to do one for this event. We've got an enhanced risk out for parts of far southeast Minnesota, northeast Iowa, into much of Wisconsin, up into the upper peninsula of Michigan. We've got a 10% tornado threat today with a hatched area uh, coinciding with that. So the potential for tornadoes, some strong, is there. Damaging winds also going to be a threat, as is large to very large hail. So uh, I'm going to try to keep this short this morning. you got to get on the road uh, very shortly. But let's go ahead and get started here. We've got our water vapor satellite imagery here. And you can see that's, that swirl in the flow that we always look for is centered up here across the northern states here. Big old swirl here. And that is going to be our trough that is going to be our main player for today. If we look at our SPC mesoanalysis here, this is at 500 millibars. Big old trough centered across southern Canada right in here. Big belt of enhanced flow rounding the base of that trough. And you can see some little kinks in the flow here. This one right here across the central plains, that is going to be our main player for today. A little bit of a short wave evident in the flow here that is going to rotate around the base of this trough and impinge into this region, this Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin region today and be our main impetus for storm redevelopment. And I say redevelopment because we have storms already ongoing. You can see here we've got, this is our visible satellite image, and you can see these robust cloud tops here across southern Iowa into southern Minnesota. That is a complex of storms that is ongoing right now. We can pull up radar here, can show you what's going on. And let me change the um, selection here. So you can see here from the radar image that we have, we've got a good band of storms that is ongoing. Storms from Nebraska overnight have moved into northern Iowa this morning, and that is going to be one of the caveats for today's event. We're going to see these storms continue into the morning hours and into the early afternoon hours here as they move into southern Minnesota and Wisconsin. Um, so number one, we could get redevelopment along the fringe of this belt of storms. And we're also likely to see redevelopment here to the south and southwest of this band of storms as we go on into the afternoon hours. But lots of rain and storms and some clouds across the region here this morning. So we're going to have to watch that for sure to see if things destabilize fully this afternoon. You can see some high clouds out ahead of this, this stuff here in Wisconsin and some trailing clouds behind these, these storms here this morning. So one, that'll be one thing to watch, full destabilization. Is that going to happen across the region? Well, let's take a look at how we're doing right now. Let's see, let's see our surface map here. You can see we have a broad swath of very high dew points here at the surface, all the way from southeast Minnesota through Iowa down into Kansas. And all within this area, very high dew points here, upper 60s to low 70s in spots here across uh, much of Missouri. We're seeing low 70s here to the north, um, upper 60s. Uh, dew points there. So very strong uh, moisture there at the surface. And you can see what we've got going on here is this kind of wind shift here that extends up into Wisconsin down through Iowa. You can see to the south of this boundary we've got southerly to southwesterly winds at the surface. To the north of this boundary we have northerly winds um, at the surface. So wind shift here. These storms in Iowa and Minnesota are going to reinforce this boundary. Although once these move off toward the north these should go ahead and allow this this boundary to retreat a little bit northward um, uh, throughout the early afternoon hours. So that's going to be the main focus, main initiation um, mechanism for storms this afternoon is going to be along this boundary. Let's take a look at some soundings here. This is the Davenport, Iowa sounding from this morning. So right kind of at that confluence of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Iowa there. And you can see what we've got going on right now. Pretty decent moist layer here up extending above 850 millibars with a little bit of a capping inversion remaining here, um, just between about 700 and 850 millibars, but not a whole lot. You can see we're almost uncapped here, and this was at 7 a.m. You can see lots of instability here going on here in this sounding. So some elevated instability this, at this point, which is allowing those storms to continue this morning. This hodograph here, not super favorable for tornadic supercells later on this afternoon, but that should change. And what's going to happen is we're going to get surface load development right along this boundary here first down into Kansas and you can already see some semblance of that occurring you can see a little bit of a cyclonic circulation here starting it's kind of this broad cyclonic circulation here across northern northeastern Kansas 
that is going to tighten up and move right along that boundary this morning. Uh, and so that will be, that will help, number one, allow the winds to the south of the boundary to increase out of the south or southeast. And number two, that will increase low level and deep layer shear as we get stronger convergence just ahead of that surface low along that boundary for more storm development this afternoon. So once again, elevated instability ongoing this morning. That should increase as we go on throughout the day, especially to the south of the ongoing cluster of storms here where the, where the clouds are not as prevalent. We should get um, lots of instability to build to the south of that. In the path of those storms, that's going to be in question, how quickly those move out and how clear it gets behind those storms is going to modulate how much instability we have behind those storms. But to the south of that boundary for sure should destabilize fairly nicely as those storms move off and we get somewhat of clearing just to the south of that um, surface front. All right, let's go on to some model data here. This is the NAM model. So you can see that shortwave pretty clearly, even at 500 millibars here, the little kink in the flow here modeled by the NAM. Again, that's going to rotate around the base of that trough, belt of enhanced flow there out ahead of it. So um, this is by 18Z. We see it right in here. So timing today is going to be a little bit earlier um, than usual. This is at 18Z, 1 p.m. Central Daylight Time. We're going to see storm development right ahead of this feature right at that kind of confluence between uh, Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin, just ahead of that shortwave, between about 18 and 21Z. So early to mid-afternoon, I think, is when we're going to see storms start to reinitiate here, right along that kind of triple point area, far northeast Iowa, far southeast Minnesota, and move off into Wisconsin, just ahead of that shortwave trough there. So deep layer shear should be more than favorable today. Let's take a look at our low-level jet. You can see we've got a nice low level jet as that frontal low moves into Wisconsin um, this afternoon. You can see that the 850 millibar winds increasing to about 40 to 50 knots here ahead of that surface low. So very strong low level shear for supercells. Here's our surface pattern. You can see some semblance of that low across Kansas kind of stretched out and elongated here on this latest NAM run with a little bit more southwesterly or veered surface winds to the south of that. We'll have to watch that throughout the day. The NAM often underdoes the surface winds here, at least as far as direction goes. But you can see very well-defined surface low there that breaks off, kind of closes closed contour here across Iowa with nice southeasterly flow out ahead of that surface low. So that's going to help increase low-level shear this afternoon and allow storms to become rapidly supercellular as they re-ignite uh, here early this afternoon. Um, just after lunchtime. So you can see that swath of 70s dew points there across the entire region. Very, very nice low level moisture. So even some dew points reading up here into the mid 70s up here into Wisconsin. So very nice low level moisture. Let's go ahead and take a sounding just to the south of that boundary up into uh, basically La Crosse, Wisconsin here. You can see very large hodographs here. Um, effective inflow layer SRH over 400 meters squared per second squared. The NAM was kind of backing off on this yesterday. Um, as the, the degree of low-level shear, not going to be the case today. This is valid at 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Very large looping hodographs there in the low levels. Not a ton of low-level directional shear in that lowest kilometer. Decent amount of speed shear, though. Um, so we do still have 0 to 1 SRH of 155 meters squared per second squared. More than adequate for tornadic supercells. Uh, but this is interesting. Not a whole lot of directional shear in that lowest kilometer, at least modeled here on the NAM. What we do have is a lot of instability. You can see almost 4,000 joules per kilogram of CAPE. Very large instability there. Very large low-level instability as well. 0 to 3 kilometer CAPE of 159 joules per kilogram. That is very, very good to allow that surface vorticity near that boundary to stretch into the vertical to assist possibly in tornado genesis this afternoon. So again, storms are going to fire probably early afternoon, early to mid-afternoon here right along that triple point there between Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin, and they will quickly move off and increase in coverage as they go off toward the northeast this afternoon into early evening. One thing I have um, a concern about today is going to be storm mode. Keep in mind this orientation of the boundary here. Again, this is going to be our initiating boundary, this kind of frontal zone here. Take a look at our shear vectors, very much parallel to the boundary. So I, I have a, a hunch that the window for discrete storms is going to be rather quick today. I think storms will go up along that front, again, near that triple point there, 
and they're going to both increase in number given the strong degree of forcing along that front and with that strong upper trough um, impacting the region um, and again these shear vectors are very much parallel to the initiating boundary so I would expect storms to become more linear very very quickly um, right after they go up maybe an hour or two for discrete storms here um, especially near the southern end of that the the line of storms that does form uh, but they should congeal rather quickly into a an MCS that moves into Wisconsin We'll check this out. This is the 12Z or the 13Z HRRR run. Just a, a guess at what the radar might look like later on this afternoon. You can see those storms continue into the early afternoon hours that were ongoing this morning. Then we get renewed development here across northern, northeastern Wisconsin, a little bit farther west than some of what some of what the earlier models were showing. But we do get supercells to fire rather quickly there by 2 to 3 p.m. there across northeast Iowa. You can see they kind of maintain some cellular characteristics but very quickly become just kind of this conglomeration of storms here across Wisconsin into far northeast Iowa this afternoon. Some embedded supercells for sure. You can see those embedded updraft helicity tracks there. So some embedded supercells for sure. Again, will have a tornado threat, perhaps some strong given the degree of, of shear there in the low levels. But I think damaging winds are is going to be the threat that um, exists as these storms kind of line out as they move into Wisconsin. Large hail will be a threat early in the convective life cycle. You can see that sounding there. Some steep lapse rates aloft, very, very large instability. Will help with the hail threat as storms remain discrete in the first hour or two of the storm life cycle. But again, I think damaging winds and some embedded tornadoes going to be the main threat as storms congeal into a line later this afternoon. So that'll, that'll do it here for this morning. Again, enhanced risk out for parts of southeast Minnesota, far southeast Minnesota, northeast Iowa, into much of central and southern Wisconsin, into the upper peninsula of Michigan. Tornadoes are going to be an issue today, likely mostly embedded tornadoes, but again, in the first couple hours of the, the storm life cycle, as the storms try to maintain a semi-discrete characteristic, tornadoes will be a threat with those storms, including the threat for a strong tornado or two. Mostly going to be a damaging wind threat, I think, as storms congeal into a line as they move across Wisconsin. Perhaps some significant damaging winds in there, uh, as well as some large to significant uh, severe hail. So with that, that'll be it. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.